So this is the expression of the H for the finite current carrying conductor. But always remember that this is the standard expression under the standard situations. This is the expression of the H for the current carrying conductor placed along the Z axis. And you are finding the magnetic field at point P which is at Z equal to 0 plane and at a perpendicular distance of rho from the Z axis. So this is the standard expression under the standard situations. But when you solve actual numerical, you may get different situation. So my dear, you have to refer this standard situation over the required situation in your numerical. What I am trying to say, for applying this formula for your required situation, you have to refer these conditions for that required numerical. You have to refer that perpendicular distance rho. You have to refer alpha 1, alpha 2, everything. You have to refer this standard situation for your required numerical. And my dear, in such cases, you may face difficulties. Because it is obvious, every time you don't expect the numerical based on the standard situation. The situation in the numerical may be anything. So you have to refer these standard situations over the required numerical. And in such case, you may face difficulty for writing this H. So, you know, we, we will not go with this raw formula as we got from the derivation. But we will modify it, we will rewrite it to apply it in any case. We will make this a general formula so that we could apply it in any case of your numerical. And it is very simple. We can rewrite this expression of H as like this. This is the more general way to represent H for the finite current carrying conductor. Note that this is not the new expression. This is the same standard expression. Just we have rewritten and arranged that according to our own way so that we could apply it in any of your case, in any of the general case of the numerical. Isn't it? So this is the more general way for representing H of the finite current carrying conductor. Let me explain you every term how to apply it. So consider any current carrying finite conductor carrying current I and place anywhere in the space with any orientation. And let us say we are finding magnetic field H due to that wire at point P. So of course I will be the current. The I in our expression is nothing but the current. It is very simple. Whatever current that wire is having, that is nothing but the I. And now extend the line containing the wire if required. If required, extend the line containing the wire. And let us say R. Capital R is the perpendicular distance of the point P from this line containing the wire. What did I say? Let us say capital R is the perpendicular distance of the point P from the wire or from the line containing the wire. Isn't it? So this capital R is nothing but the perpendicular distance of the point from the wire, from the conductor or from the line containing the wire. It is just like rho in your standard expression. Isn't it? Now point out the initial and final points of the wire and connect them with the required point P. And the angles made by these segments with the capital R will be our alpha 1 and alpha 2. These are the angles from that point P. And based on the direction of the current and considering the central position as capital R, you can have two sides. These initial and final points can both be on the one side or they can be on the either side. And based on that, alpha 1, alpha 2, they both can be negative, they both can be positive or one can be negative, one can be positive as we have discussed. So these are the angles alpha 1 and alpha 2. And finally, the unit vector of H or the direction of the H 
it should be taken manually by observing the direction of cross product IDL cross AR. Actually, we are only interested in the directions of IDL and AR. But the direction of H or the final unit vector of H, you should write it manually by observing the cross product IDL cross AR. What is IDL? It is the current element and you know that direction of the current element is always along the current. So IDL is the direction of current. It is the current element. And what is AR? It is the unit vector along the perpendicular distance capital R pointing from the wire to the required point. Again, I am repeating. AR is the unit vector along the perpendicular distance capital R pointing towards the required point. My dear, just recall the standard derivation under the standard situation. We got unit vector A5 in our standard expression. Isn't it? Why did we get A5? Because we started with the bias Hobbes law. Under the standard situation, our current carrying conductor was placed along Z axis. And under that standard conditions, we got unit vector A5 because we have started with bias Hobbes law, which is like this IDL cross AR. If you remember at that time, that small r was the vector pointing from the current element to the required point, isn't it? So, for general case, we have modified it. So, always remember. The unit vector of H, you should take it manually by observing the direction of cross product IDL cross AR. IDL, it is the current element, direction of the current. AR, it is the unit vector along the perpendicular distance R pointing towards the required point. So, this will be our general expression of the H and we will go with this expression because it is the general way to represent H for any finite current carrying conductor. And one more thing, my dear, one more thing. I have put sin alpha 2 minus sin alpha 1 into the mod. I have put mod over them. Because you know, when you apply this general expression, when you find H by this general way, you explicitly find unit vector of H. You manually find unit vector of H and in such case, the sine of sine alpha 2 minus sine alpha 1 may produce conflict. It may produce error and hence for general case, we should put that sine alpha 2 minus sine alpha 1 into the mod. So, you know, in this general expression, always remember that you have to put sine alpha 2 minus sine alpha 1 into the mod. And now you can observe the general expression. It is same, almost same as your standard expression as we got for the standard situation, isn't it? But it is more useful while applying it to any condition of your numerical. Very, very simple.